So looking back at our plan here, we see there's three more things that look boring until we get to interesting, which is running interactive jobs. We'll talk about applications first, which is really short and sort of an introduction to how software even works on a cluster at all and why it's so difficult. Then we go to software modules, which is the common way of actually um, using the um, software and then data storage. And we hope to get to interactive jobs and maybe a little bit of serial jobs by the end of the day. So applications. So Simo, why is software on a cluster so why is software on a cluster so difficult? Well, yeah, there's actually few few reasons for this. Uh, so first, um, uh, some of the software uh, it needs to be installed in a very specific way for it to work optimal in an optimized fashion. Uh, so many of the software that is available in in Triton is installed by us so that it's actually working as intended. Uh, so because we want to also make so, certain that the there's no bugs in the installations or anything like that, so that the the scientific results are correct. <laughs> That's pretty important when you're doing science. Uh, then other thing is that there are huge amount of users. So uh, we want to support like a, a generic user in the best way possible. So we want to install s stuff for everybody so that they can. Uh, run stuff out of the box and they don't have to figure out how to install the software themselves uh, and they don't have to um, manage the installation themselves. Also, yeah, having self-managed installations can sometimes lead to uh, problems, especially on the storage side. When you're running hundreds of thousands of jobs, uh, then you might end up with problems in the uh, storage side. Uh, but basically, what we do in uh, Aldos Keycomp, we we install like the most commonly used software. Uh, if it's easy to install, well, we usually install it quite quickly. Uh, if it's hard to install, then we discuss with the users how to how how can we get it uh, installed in the best way possible. But basically. Uh, we have a lot of already existing scientific software that's being checked. Uh, so that it works on our cluster. Uh, there's also, of course, a lot of legacy software because like we mentioned, uh, Triton is an on, ongoing project and it's been ongoing for years and years. So there's also legacy software for those people who have used this legacy software for uh, for their uh, like research in the years past. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, you might encounter some old legacy software. We are trying to move towards a situation where we can deprecate, deprecate them in a faster speed uh, so that they, you won't get confused by the amount of software. But we have hundreds of different uh, software installations in Triton. Yeah. But the, the first things first. Yeah. 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 It's basic, right. like basically dealing with software that's difficult to install is the bane of CMOS life right now. There's so many things that can go wrong. Yeah, but but uh, the most important thing for you as a user is that uh, you should first check our uh, wiki page whether the software, uh, whether the software you are looking for is available. Because if if you are not a Unix no snowflake, uh, if you are using some common uh, software stack like uh, like Pandas uh, or Python, R, MATLAB, uh, GPO, uh, Lamps. Okay, uh, TensorFlow, I don't know, PyTorch. There's a huge amount of different software that's already installed. And if the software, uh, if you look at the software in our documentation and it's not up to date, uh, you know that at least in one point in history we supported it. So you can ask whether we will want to install a newer version for yourself. And, and that's usually a, a good way of going at like when you start using some software, it's a good idea to check the specific page for that software. And if you're going, if the page looks old or something like that, then ask us whether we can update the, the software. Yeah, 
So when would you say someone should ask us to install software for them versus when should they try to install it themselves? That's a really good question. Uh, so I'd say that first they should check if the software is available and works for them uh, without any modifications. So if, if the software is already installed, for example, we provide very, uh, well, big Anaconda stacks for Python users uh, so that people can use them. We have also provide MATLAB installations and stuff like that. So I, I haven't heard of any user who wants to install their own MATLAB. Uh, I don't think <laughs> it's even possible. But, yeah. but basically, it, there are many software that, that works out of the box and nobody needs to uh, usually install them. Uh, then there's questions uh, whether the software is very specific for your case. If you need to recompile it at some point or something, then you might want to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if you feel that this is a software that other people in your group, in your collaborators, er, people want to use, or you feel like it's something that you don't know necessarily how to, how to, uh, how to compile it yourself, uh, then you should ask us. But it's not like asking never hurts anybody. So, so it's a good yeah. idea to then ask what is our opinion of a certain software if you post it. We might have also yeah. a herd of alternatives. Like you might mm -hmm. end up mm -hmm. being recommended a software that's uh, old and deprecated and there might be a newer software that can do the same kind of stuff. So uh, yeah. it might be a good idea to, idea to ask us because we, have, we might have heard of a newer version of the same software, a newer kind of software. Yeah, that's a good point, especially about asking us. So even if you think that you definitely need to install it yourself, it doesn't hurt to ask us and say, I'm about to install this myself. Good idea, bad idea, mm -hmm. and it might save you some time. Okay, so in the future, in the next session, we'll talk about modules, which is basically the way that you get all of the thousands of versions of software we've installed and make it usable to you. So we don't really need to talk more about that right now. We will get there um, shortly. One other point is, sing oh, is singularity containers. So did you have something about the previous topic? No, no, I, I was yeah. just going to say about singularity containers. So basically, I don't know if you necessarily haven't heard about Singularity, but it's, it's this uh, open source project uh, for reusable uh, scientific containers. So basically, mm -hmm. they are like Docker containers, like the small, like you bunch what? the whole operating system and all of the software needed by your code uh, into one file. And that file, uh, you can then give, uh, well, share it for the wider scientific community. You can give it to your reviewers. When you submit a paper, you can oh. you can uh, put it uh, put it into some archive if people want to replicate your results. So it's it's like this. It's meant for re reusable uh, code, and it's also very useful if you have some software that depends on some specific versions of, let's say, Ubuntu fourteen oh four or something like that, like a really old operating system. Like you want to replicate some result and it's hard to install. Yeah. So these singularity containers are very useful for this. And we have this whole workflow built around it. Uh, and we are trying to update it so that it, it's even more easier for you to bring your own containers to Triton. But just like if you're, if any of this uh, sounded interesting to you, uh, then let us know uh, what kind of software you would want to bring as a singularity container to Trident, and we can help you deal with that. Yeah. For example, uh, we uh, also provide these NVIDIA uh, containers. So NVIDIA has this whole scheme of they provide a huge amount of their software, and you can run the same containers in many other systems, like in in CSC and 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 somewhere. So if you want to have a, a, like a open, like a system uh, of identical installations on many different systems, it's might, it might be a good idea to use these containers so then you can scale your job to let's say CSC or somewhere else. Yeah, 
I always make this joke that when you have software that's so difficult to install that you just can't, then you package the whole operating system and make that your software. But anyway, we already talked yeah. about requesting new software. So if you create the software that you hope others can use, please try to make it easy to package and share, and that will make it easier for others to use it. So you can see a link here where I've sort of described a little bit about that, but we don't need to go into details about that right now. So um, we will not do these exercises right now. We were talking and thought that it's not really a necessary thing to do. Um, so next we will go to software modules. Yes, I guess let's proceed. But first I propose we have a 10 minute break where everyone can get up and stretch your legs and so on. Um, Simo, does that sound good to you? I couldn't hear you. I still can't hear you. Okay, let's go to a break. Um, until... Well, breaks are good, so let's go until 10 past the hour. See you then.